Hello everyone and welcome back to the last two videos of this lecture series on optimization for machine learning. What we have treated in the last few videos were the cases of constraints where we have additional inequalities or equalities that constrain the, the set of, uh, from which we can select our, uh, our vector w. Right? So here it generally says w is from the real numbers or q of them. So unconstrained and then we constrain the set by saying that some inequalities have to hold as well as some equalities need to hold. And then we learned about the KKT conditions, so optimality conditions, what we need to change from the gradient has to be zero towards the gradients of the loss function plus um, KKT multipliers times the gradients of these inequality and equality constraints. This is our new optimality condition. And then we talked a little bit about how to solve these problems by using barrier methods or penalty methods, as well as sequential quadratic programming. And there I just gave a very brief outlook at the end of last video. And I would like to spend this and also the next video on explaining in a lot more detail how this sequential solving in, in sequential quadratic, quadratic programming works. And so here's the solution strategy to our SQP problem. So I've written down a little bit already. Um, the idea is we have our um, constraint optimization problem, which I denote by COP here, and we are going to replace it by a quadratic program. And not once, but multiple times. So this is what the sequential quadratic program means. We have a sequence of quadratic programs, and then we need to solve these quadratic programs one by one, and then update the quadratic program, solve the new version, and so on. So there's a back and forth between part one of our strategy and part two of our strategy. And so here's how we do it. Um, we're going to start first with the QP. Um, so I'm going to write it down in a, let's say, a somewhat more general way. I'm going to use the variables that we're used to, but then I will make links to, to what we have seen on this, uh, in the videos before. Okay, so the general setting is, um, and you have seen this S already, so minimize over a vector S from the real numbers. And remember this S was our update. So S is the difference between W in the kth iteration and W in the k plus first iteration. And then we have this quadratic loss function, which means we have a quadratic term S transpose times a matrix S, H times S again. Then we have a linear term, a vector G times our input S. And then we have this constant term, which is not really important for optimization. It's just an offset, doesn't influence our minimize at all. And then we have these constraints, which are also of a specific form. Right? This is what's being written here. We have a quadratic program with linear constraints. And so what we're going to use here is a matrix C times S plus some vector D, which has to be smaller than or equal to zero. And we have as our inequality, uh, excuse me, as our equality constraints, this matrix C hat times S plus a D hat, which has to be equal to zero. Okay, and now there's all sorts of new variables, let's say, but we can actually look at this. And if we relate back to the video from before, what we said is that we wanted to take our constraint optimization problem here and take a local linearization of the constraints as well as a quadratic approximation of the objective function. So this has to be related to our general problem. And we did it in the last uh, video by using a Taylor series expansion of order two for the objective function and of order one for the constraints. So what we do if we uh, develop a Taylor series expansion around our current iterate W, we get this offset by means of S. So this constant term here simply is the loss function of w at our kth iterate, okay? And then we have seen that this one, as, is, as I said, s is w k plus one 
minus wk. Okay, so this is really our the difference, our update. And so what we want to do here is in this linear case, what we had is that the g is really nothing but the gradient of the loss function at our kth iterate. Okay? And then we have this quadratic function where this s here, this is, I'm omitting the index to make it look less nasty, but this is really our s in the kth iteration, right? And then all that's left is, in, in terms of the loss function, is this quadratic term. And then we have seen that this h is nothing but the Hessian matrix. So it's the second order, the, the matrix of sec second order derivatives, again, of our loss function at our iterate wk. Okay, so you see, it looks very general, but in fact, it's not really scary. What we do is we are at our current iterate wk, we evaluate the loss function, the gradient, and the Hessian matrix, which means we need first and second order derivative information, and then that's it. We have replaced our loss function by a version that is a quadratic function. Very important here is the fact that this H matrix has to be positive definite in order for this to be a well-posed problem. But let's not worry about this for now. Let's just assume that this is the case. Um, and so we have a problem that can be solved. What's left to be done is to, you know, put uh, constraints also in, in a specific form, let's say. And so what we do here is exactly the same as we did here, only now in terms of the constraint function. So I'm not going to write it down for all of them, but let's go for the inequalities and then the, the equalities are basically identical. So what I mean by this is that this d is nothing but a vector of constraints, so c1 at our current iterate wk until c n i, so we had n i inequalities at our current iterate w k. Okay, and you may guess it's a Taylor series expansion. This is the linear term. We uh, develop our expansion around w k, so this is the gradient and then times the difference, which is s. So the C matrix is a matrix consisting of all these gradients. Okay, so the C matrix is nothing but the gradient of our first loss function at the kth iterate until the gradient of the nth loss uh, constraint in iteration k. Okay, so it looks really technical if you think about it, but actually it's not that complicated, right? What we do is we have our problem. We assume that we know the derivative and second derivative, or we are able to compute it, as well as evaluate the constraint function and compute derivatives. And then this pink problem is really nothing but evaluating all these orange expressions. And then we arrive at our quadratic program that I'm calling QP now. Okay, so this concludes part one of our strategy, which is a lot of notation, but really nothing, nothing fancy going on here. And so the question is now, can we solve this in a more easy fashion than this one? And the answer is yes, otherwise we would not go through all this trouble. There's a second step that we need for our strategy in order to make it really easily solvable. And this is what we denote as the active set strategy. So here's the deal. We have inequality constraints and we have equality constraints. And the inequalities are what worry us a little bit because there is, we, you know, we discussed this in the, in the videos before, there's this issue of case sensitivity, you know, is a inequality constraint satisfied with equality? It's basically an equality constraint. If it is satisfied with inequality, so strict inequality, then it doesn't really matter, right? So this is what this active set approach is all about. What you can do is you define a set A, so this is what I'm going to denote by this, by this curly A. And this is the set of indices from, um, from 1 to Ni. But not all of them. It's just a subset of these indices for which the inequalities Ci at a given 
value w hold with equality. Okay, so we do make a strict separation between active constraints, which means that this is equality, and inactive constraints, which means that this is a strict inequality. And for the latter, we don't really care. We just say, okay, the active ones are which matter, the inactive ones means, okay, I can move around without violating the constraint. And so here's the nice thing, if I do this, I can get rid of the inequalities and make another set of equality constraints out of them. So what I get is a QP hat version, a, a, a still another version, where I just uh, have equality constraints, but the active set obviously may change over time. Okay, so what I'm going to write down now is the final problem here, minimize S over RQ, and then our loss function is the same as here, so I'm not going to change anything, it's S transposed H times S, the quadratic term, plus the linear term, plus our offset, which is not of real importance. And now we have the constraints, which is where things are different now, because we are going to denote C uh, subscript A as the part of the C matrix, so the rows of the transpose or the columns of this matrix where we actively have the constraints to, or where the constraints are active. So what this means is I can subsume this as a larger vector where I have C subscript A, which means this is only the, row, the columns of the C matrix for which the constraints hold with equality, these are active, and my C hat matrix times S plus, and now the very same thing for, otherwise the dimensions wouldn't work out obviously, for my constant term equal to zero. Okay, so you see this and this problem are somewhat equivalent because I have factored out these which are not uh, satisfied with equality and those I don't care about. And so here we have our second QP, which is QP hat. Okay, and so here's our strategy. I can now solve this problem a lot easier than this one and I can solve this one easier than this one. So what we need to do is solve this one in a sequential fashion, again a sequence, by changing the active set, which gives us the solution of this one. And then if we solve this one repeatedly for different quadratic local approximations, then we end up in the optimum of this one. So this is what the next video is going to be about, but before we do so, let's have a look at the optimality condition for this one, okay? So what we see here is we have now our active set, we have well, restricted our problem to the active set, and can now solve this, and the KKT condition are actually not that hard to, to, you know, evaluate here. What we will see, in fact, is that this is a nice and easily solvable system. So what I have as my KKT condition is the gradient of my loss function, and I'm denoting this by hat, so this is what I'm denoting by L hat, my new function as a function of s, plus the sum of my inequality constraints, but now only the part that is truly active, ci of s, oh excuse me, gradient ci of s, plus the sum over all j mu j times gradient of cj hat of s, okay? So this is what we have seen already. This is just our standard KKT condition that has to be satisfied in order for this problem or the S being a local minimizer for this problem. And the nice thing is now that this is a quadratic function, the constraints are linear, which means we get a very nice closed form linear solution. Okay, so let's look at the gradient of the loss function, which is, this is a quadratic term. So what we get is just H times s for this term, the derivative of this one will just give us g. And now we need to take the derivative, the multiplier times the derivative of 
our equality constraints. So you see CA times S, derivative with respect to S gives us the C matrix. So what I get here is the C matrix times lambda. And so this is the matrix formulation of this one. Here's, it's a sum over the individual vectors. This is the, the matrix vector product. And what I can do now is the same thing for this one. Derivative with respect to S gives me the C hat times mu. Okay, so this looks easy enough. And what you can also see now is the KKT conditions. If you recall, we had a couple of conditions, which means this is not by, its, uh, by itself an optimality condition because we cannot ensure that the constraints do hold. This is something that has to be ensured uh, separately. So the inequality constraints plus, uh, sorry, yeah, plus DA have to be satisfied and the inequality constraints, sorry, the active inequality constraints and the equality constraints both have to be satisfied as well. And so here we have now the optimality conditions for our problem QP hat. And what you see, it's a linear system, right? So very, very nice. And if you recall, we have seen this a couple of times already in the regression setting, where we saw, well, if we have a nice optimization problem, then we can find a closed form solution for a minimizer, right? It's a quadratic function. So if this is positive definite, it does have a unique minimizer. So we can solve this linear system of equations and by this get an immediate solution to this problem, okay? So this is really important, this one is linear. So here you have the strategy. We set an initial condition. We solve this problem by solving a linear system. I will get to this in a second video. And what we need to do then is we need to reiterate over our active set because this can change during execution. And once we have converged here, we have a solution that is a solution to this one. And then we can update our weights and get a new local quadratic program so that in the end, we will find an optimal solution for this one. So well, it does look quite technical, but I hope you could follow the strategy rather well. And in the next and final video, we will discuss in a little bit more detail how the active set approach really can solve this quite easily and efficiently. Thank you.